Hello, welcome to Access. My name's Nathan. This is Dave. Hello. Dave, these, I want, these are five, got five questions yeah, and I I've, want them to be answered. <laughs> I've got more than five, Nathan. I've, we've we've agreed on these. I've tried to condense them down. We've been playing Bloodborne. So just um, to orient yourselves, we're going to try not to give away tons and tons of spoilers. All the capture in this video is going to be from the first area of Central Yharnam. Um, and we're not going to go further than that, but the things that we are going to be discussing, the implications of them, I guess they could be uh, quite far-reaching. Um, to give you an idea, I'm about a third of the way through the game, so if you've got further than that and you know the answers to these questions, be considerate in the comments. But this is just for people who are kind of through the game a little bit and they just want some discussion. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? And, and the reason it's not a ridiculous thing to discuss, Dave, is because um, Miyazaki's games, the Souls games, Demon Souls, Dark Souls, um, there is always a sense of our, you know, of these kind of big existential questions. Are, yeah. are we alive? Are we dead? What? Why are we here? Yeah. What's going on? What is my objective here? So let's start with number one. Tell us what number one is. Number one. What does the blood do? I know what normal blood does. Yes. This is a different sort. Yes, it really is. And uh, there's lots of it. It's in the name of the game, Bloodborne. Yes. What does that mean? Born of blood? Who or knows? Or like living in blood? I mean, well, it, it's born, it means born by blood, bloodborne, something carried in blood. Yes. That's what it means. It doesn't mean born of blood. It's got an E at the end. It's a different, different word. Different kind of born. Different word. But so, um, Jason born. In that ridiculous way that the, the, the From Software's games tell you story, and unless you're paying attention, you don't realise that you're being told the story, which is a lesson I learned in Dark Souls, where I got halfway through, started, you know, reading a guide, and was like, oh, "How does this guide know all of these things and the names of these people and where?" Yeah. Well, you know what I mean? Like they, they put a template on top of it. So that happened to me. This is why this is the number one question. This happened to me when I was playing Bloodborne, um, and I did the beginning, and I was like, I'm "Trying," I was like, "Come on, pay attention, everything." Yeah. Um, and I got put to sleep by um, the doctor man. Yeah. And he puts you to sleep with blood. Yes, he does. Um, and and then, he has a little giggle whilst he's doing it. Yeah, and he makes you go, okay, that's what you want to hear, isn't it? You count backwards from 100. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, so, and, and then when I walked back through this area, just that whole, uh, I, I revisit, I kind of, to get hold of my experience of Bloodborne, because I was getting a bit spun out, and, you know, you get really, it's very anxious, and I was exploring in lots of different directions. Went all the way through Central Yarnum again, started off at the clinic, um, and you kind of see, you know, the the very cool looking um, 19th century uh, like medical beds yeah. and they've got like transfusion drips and if you've got I had the monocle list day, so I looked underneath and there's like a bucket of syringes underneath yeah, the bed and stuff I saw that there's chairs with like big thick leather straps to, to hold people down and there's just like shelves and shelves of vials and, and there seems to be some kind of cult going on like a cult of uh, where I've reached in the game people who were very interested in what blood does and i guess it is i mean it harkens to like not just ideas of like the occult or um but really specifically you know like werewolf myths and legends and or and, and then the big one i guess which we want to talk about was kind of like vampirism does seem to be a thing yeah because of the way health works right absolutely yeah uh, or, or is it health as you as we spoke about in our last video like you well you this know. is oh, i was going to bring that up in the next uh, okay. question well actually. we won't go there quite late then because just the other thing i wanted to say was like um it struck me when we were having a conversation the other day how like it is blood like i've been treating you know blood vials for a long time it was just press triangle i know it's my health stomach, you know, that's my health done no worries and then it struck me uh, when we were having a conversation that at the very start of the game if you go back and and see i think it's yosefka with an eye yeah yosefka she'll give you a, a vial of her blood and it's yeah and i was thinking that's her blood she's giving you a vial this of is, her yeah, blood wait a minute this is yeah. weird there's two people that feed on blood dave and there's vampires and cyclists so right. you know <laughs> what's going on there yeah. that, that's what I'm just laying that stuff out um, no I think it is odd I did that I um, a bit later on in the game Another, there are other ways that other characters sometimes offer you their blood as like a token this will help you yeah. hunting the the beasts yeah. and you kind of go thanks <laughs> like yeah. imagine if you got that for Christmas that would be terrible yes, it would. just a bunch of blood so let's move on to question two yeah. the blood so the blood I, well, to, to kind of sum up the blood to me I don't know this is why I want these questions answered yeah. but um, exactly what is the meaning of it why is everyone so transfixed on the idea of blood or is it just hanging there as like a thing to give the game tons of brilliant atmosphere because it is doing that that's what it certainly is are we awake yeah that is question. question two are we awake I yeah mean, are we awake now Dave assuming at the, you yes. know in that opening yes, cutscene that we are awake and then we are put to sleep yeah and then when we awaken again in inverted commas <laughs> yeah are we things awake things are different then yes I mean there's like different. a Silent Hill vibe to it I mean this kind of happens in Dark Souls but the transformation in, in, in Dark Souls and Demon Souls is death like the right. idea that you 
die and then reawaken as an undead and you can go through that process many times and that the binary of that you know you're either dead or alive or, yeah. or, or undead but you know what i mean once you're once you are transformed into an undead you can be hollow or you can be normal but yeah. it's like very much like you're either dead or you're alive you yeah. kind of get that you pass through the veil you come back with this is much more like as you say it's ambiguous because you are put to sleep at the beginning you apparently wake up but then you're able to move through these lap- and you can awaken yeah. You can awaken at the hunter's dream. Yeah. Awaken in a dream. And talking to a doll. So there's always like the fabric of it is much less one or the other. I don't uh, know. The where characters in Hunter's are. Dream refer to it. The doll and, and the there's a man in a wheelchair who you can you can meet he they both refer to it as a dream as well, as Hunter's Dream as being a dream. Yeah. And um this is a spoiler. So skip twenty seconds if you don't want to hear it, but there is a secret area in the game, in the more real part of the game. Yeah. Which is exactly the same. Wow. It's a secret area where I found the doll's clothes, a bonnet oh and everything. Um, well, you can see it on Twitter. I'm just me standing <laughs> next to her. Yeah, so that so it's like the dream is like a memory of that real place. Right. That hunters somehow know for some reason. And that, that was like, ah. Yeah. So are you awake? Are you awake? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Um, Number three. I'm, I'm going to hang it on something more concrete now. Okay. Number three. What does insight mean? What, what does it signify? Yeah. This uh, this had a yeah insight. Oh god! Do you want to explain what insight is? Insight is a uh, it's um I guess I, I guess it's a sort of currency that you receive um mostly by meeting bosses. By I guess they explain it in the in game as sort of having knowledge of yeah. of the, the evil, the creatures in the world, which usually just comes in the form of you meet a boss and you gain some insight. You can also get it from uh, helping people out. Uh, but more interestingly, From? there's an item called uh, Madman's Knowledge, which is a yeah. skull, a skull that looks sort of partly exploded. So um, insight is linked to the idea of being insane. Well, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, the Madman has had knowledge, and it busts uh, it, out and his has head. gained it, insight. It literally broke his head. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, that is some knowledge. So your story of insight is because you need to spend insight when you summon other people to help you yeah. uh, defeat bosses. And uh, you haven't got any left. No, well, no, the, I've summoned a few people. <laughs> Some the, didn't turn up. <laughs> and the, well, the other thing about insight is the more that you have, again, light spoilers here. If you get over a certain level, I think it's fifteen, the enemies start to scale in difficulty. They get new abilities and they basically get scarier. And you can, I mean, search this on YouTube if you like. I think if you if you get like, I think I've seen a video with like sixty. Wow. And I think it does get you know strange things happen. Yeah. The more insight you get, like you can't quite handle it and i don't know what it means because you, you first time you first bit of insight you get when you then return to hunter's dream that's when you're able to level up as a character and it's like you're only real in that world once you have like a portion of insight but i feel like yeah. it, insight isn't necessarily a positive attribute like, no that's I, th- I think that's i mean if this is a dream the intensity of the enemies getting uh, you know increasing as you get more insight suggests that you are somehow more invested in and lost further in this kind of horrible corrupted nightmare world yeah and you, that's not good like thing. insights would suggest sort of an awareness it, it feels like knowledge like but but, but like pulling back a veil exactly. and instead it's like you're you're going deeper into, into the, this nightmare yeah i don't know i, I don't say, know either oh god it's good though i love yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> number four um are you a monster yeah are you the real monster i mean i don't look like a monster Mm. Apart from when I'm covered in blood, but of, of the real monsters, right? But everyone else does. Yeah. I mean, this is um, uh, this is something. I mean, Rob is convinced of this as well, and he was he was talking about specifically how, for the, like, normally when you kill stuff, when you kill NC- NPC characters in Souls games, they just kind of go. Ugh. Yeah. But because these you're killing people who some of them look human, yeah, and they're just like a mob, the hunt, and some of them look less human, they started to become beasts. But is that you deteriorating or them? Yeah. And because when they die, they say stuff. They call you. They say like, "There's one guy, one NPC character who has like fire, and he keeps on saying he's gonna burn you, burn, burn." And then, uh, and when they die, they say stuff like, "This town's finished. This town's finished." Yeah. He sounds like a Mighty Bush character. I've been told like it's your fault. Yeah, I, I know. Oh, what and I think that you're cursed. Yeah. So, I mean, there, there's very little ambiguity in their messages, actually, yeah. is there? So the idea that maybe... I mean, maybe it's just part of the madness that everyone sees everyone else as the enemy. Yeah. Or or maybe there's something more sinister going on. But then you do meet other characters, other hunters. Yeah. You meet good... You meet ones who, are, who, who seem to be kind of corrupted, but you also meet ones who are friendly to you. Yeah. Can you have that kind of rational communication if you are, in fact, a beast? Yeah. I don't know. 
I don't know. And and one other um, one other thing is that you have like a beast stat. Yes, that's sort so of that's something that I didn't build, realize. It's building up inside you. Yeah, and then it comes out. Yeah, I mean, in what knows? form? Who knows what it means? And that's brings me on to the last question, Dave. This one is for you. Right. Are we doing the right thing? Can we do the right thing? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's why. No, it. that's. I mean, I, that is a good question. <laughs> that's what, a good thing to. What is the on. right thing? That's. I don't know. I guess that's the. We're I'm doing not a thing. Sure. That murdering everything in sight is the right thing. But you don't really have a choice in it. That's, no, that's that for sure. True. Yeah, that's what I mean. Can you do the right thing? Yeah. Is there a way through this world without without you... murdering? But is murdering wrong? I mean, it, there seems to be two schools of thought in the game. Like though everyone who's behind the door, uh, all the doors who've locked in, seem quite happy that I'm on a hunt. Yeah, true. Uh, and and so, wish I'd get on with it. So these are in, in Yarnum. You can knock on doors and windows, and you can speak to some of the people inside. But then also, you, there are specific ways of helping some of these people out. Some of them don't end too good. Yeah. Some of them, you know what I mean? Like, I guess what I like is the idea of a game where you're not really sure if you're good or bad. You're not really sure if you're awake or dreaming, and you have no idea whether any of the things that you do will end up helping or murdering the people that you're interacting with. Yeah. And in that way, it's like life. Yes, and I also like the fact that if you know, because we don't really have a choice in what you're doing, that it's sort of like a, it, it reinforces the kind of nightmare element of it. Because in a nightmare, mm. you're capable of doing things that you pro probably wouldn't, and like yeah. things you would not ev even ever consider. But you can't stop what happens in a nightmare, and and you can't really, you can't, you can't choose not to kill bad things in, in Bloodborne, really. Cause no, they're, they're all after you, uh, unless you want to just hang out by the lamp forever. Yeah, it's fight or flight. And even flight's not going to get you too far a lot of the time. So I guess it's, it's a strange one, this, because we do want you to comment down below. We do want you to talk about these ideas. But if you could if you could be sensitive to the fact that some people are going to be in different places in the game to use, don't throw out kind of references to different bosses and stuff. Um, just be careful. Um, and I think, there, I think there is a general conversation to be had about these things without going into those kind of end-level stuff. Um, because I don't think I don't think there's gonna I mean not having played the other games it's not like I think you're gonna get to a certain level and it's like oh it's just all written down it's all of written course, down it's, it's, all yeah. written. it's fine because in Dark Souls we could have this same conversation about these similar elements in Dark Souls right now and I wouldn't have any idea yeah. um, and I've played that game through and through um, so yes do get involved down below let us know what you think about these things just tell us what you're enjoying about Bloodborne and if there's anything in that central Yarnum area that, you know, that we haven't picked up on that you think might be interesting to the things that we're discussing um, if you are not living in a perpetual nightmare, then consider subscribing to Access because we do make lots of videos about everything on PlayStation 4, PlayStation 3 and PlayStation Vita. And like this video if you did indeed like this video. Say goodbye, Dave. Goodbye, Dave. Bye.